Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Broken Knights Games. My name is Sam Figgy, and I'm a software developer, and I play, design, and build video games. So lately, I've been creating some new assets for my game called Sumo Showdown. In this video, I will be showing you my process for sculpting rock formations using Mudbox 2019 and Blender. Lastly, I'll show you how I create textures and import it into Unity so that it's game ready. So if you're new to digital sculpting or Mudbox and you don't know where to start, um, rocks are probably the easiest uh, project to do because <laughs> they're pretty hard to screw up. Um, and that I'll show you some techniques in this video that you can apply to creating other assets in the future. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video and stay tuned for more game dev videos. All right, let's make some rocks. All right, so first things first, let's find some rock formations uh, that we can use as a reference that'll um, give us some inspiration. So this this uh, level takes place in a a desert canyon uh, kind of setting so I'm looking for some of that sandstone with that that orange color that you typically see out west um, you know this this one right here I think looks really good it's got it's got the, the good color palette and you know it's got some of that those uh, cracks and, and and grooves in there so I think that'll make for some interesting rocks all right so let's get started um, so we're in mud box here so we're going to first start by clicking File, and then we're going to select New Scene at the top. And we have some initial base meshes to pick from, so I'm going to pick the sphere, because that's usually the best for kind of organic shapes like rocks. Um, and then, uh, so let's take a look at the mesh here. So I'm going to select and turn on wireframe so we can see, uh, you know, what we're, what we're working with here. And then we'll get started. Um, so I, I usually block out the initial shape with the foam brush. Um, it's really good for adding a lot uh, of shape to the, you know, some of the starting objects so we can get that that kind of rock shape going. Um, you know, think of it kind of like it spraying foam on top of your surface, or, or I like to think of it, it's kind of like inflating from the inside. Um, so I'm just gonna go around and, you know, try to get that that rock shape blacked out. And, you know, don't worry about this this looking perfect because um, that's not that's not what we're after right now. We're just trying to get that, that like silhouette of, of the rock. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be adding plenty of detail to this, uh, a little bit later here. So I'm just kind of going around here and getting that shape. And yeah, this is, this is starting to turn out. All right. So this looks pretty good for a silhouette. And now we're just going to go and save what we have so far. It's always good to save your work often in case you... Uh, so you don't lose anything, obviously. So I'm just going to create a new folder here. Uh, call it CR Rock 2. Uh, you can see I already made one before. A uh, different rock. Um, so I'm just going here and give it a new name. CR Rock 2. And we're going to go ahead and save. Alright, so next up we're going to do a retopology operation. And what this will do is it will... Um, rebuild the mesh um, with uniform vertices and faces that kind of match the shape that we sculpted. So I'm going to go and select 500 for the target uh, face count and then make sure we have sculpted detail checked because that's what we just did um, and we want that on the new mesh. So now I'm going to go and click retopologize. And you can see in the lower left hand corner it's uh, calculating away, creating a new mesh and it's done. Alright, so now we can uh, Go in our object pane on the right, and you can see we have our new mesh, retopology re operation one, and we'll just go and delete the old one because we don't need that anymore. We have our new mesh. All right, so now we're going to add some subdivision levels and uh, some sculpt layers so we can start adding some detail. Uh, so I'm just going to go on the uh, right here and click sculpt and then click on new layer and I'll call this one flattening because I'm going to uh, flatten some of these ridges here to make it look more like a rock and now I'm going to press shift D to add a new subdivision and I'll press it three times so we get up to six and I'm going to press page down uh, to go to level five um, and then we'll start sculpting some detail on this layer so I'm going to my brushes here and uh, I'm going to go with the uh, um, the flatten brush here it is and uh, uncheck my stamp image here 
And I'm just gonna start going to flatten some of these some of these ridges here and make it look more like a rock. All right, so as you can see, it's starting to look pretty good. You know, it looks like a simple rock, but we want it to look like a sandstone. If I pull my reference here, um, you know, we got that those grooves in there and lots of cracks and those other grooves and, you know, some more details. So uh, we're going to go ahead and add some of that to this rock here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new layer. And, you know, we're just going to do some experimenting here. Uh, we'll try to get some of those those sweet grooves. Um, so I'm just kind of trying a couple things here. Um, you know, it, it doesn't really turn out that great uh, initially here. But, you know, that's that's the beauty of working with layers is you can kind of experiment without worry about screwing up your mesh. Because if you don't like it, you can just can just go ahead and erase it um, which I end up doing right here and you know give it another go and you know that looks bad too. get rid of that all right so I think what I end up uh, using for this is the wax tool um, that'll kind of build up um, so I, I figured I'll just build up a little bit um, instead of cutting in to create some of those grooves and you know I think this looks pretty good so I'll just go around and you know, add some more characters, some more texture to this rack. Um, kind of add some of those deeper grooves in there. Um, and we'll, we'll go refine this a little bit later. But I'm just kind of, we're still kind of blocking out a little bit. Um, just getting some of those initial shapes put together here. And, you know, this is kind of starting to look like a sandstone. Yeah, this looks pretty good. All right, so we got our interesting grooves. We got our interesting shapes happening here. So now it's we're going to create a new layer. Um, and also, I'm going to step up to level 6 and create a new layer. Um, so now we can uh, add some more detail here. So I'm going to go and select the Scrape tool and just kind of go around and soften all those round edges on some of those... Uh, surface that I build up with the wax tool uh, try to make it look a little bit, little bit more rocky and hard um, instead of so uh, smooth so just kind of get a little bit more rigid here just kind of go around and just scrape off all the uh, the roundness that I just added and you can see we get some of those nice hard edges there uh, for some of those grooves and I think this looks this looks pretty good all right so then after that, since we uh, changed the mesh significantly enough, I'm going to do another retopology operation. Still using 500, uh, still transferring uh, sculpted detail onto the new mesh. Uh, and this time, we can see here that you know everything came through okay. Um, so now I'm going to add a new layer here and. Uh, keep going at it with the detail so I'm using the knife tool now uh, adding some cracks this is my one of my favorite tools for working with rocks um, you can get some really good organic looking cracks uh, to give it some more character make it look a little worn um, you know just make sure you don't pick too sharp of a fall off um, so you can get some some nice wide cracks here going um, yeah this looks pretty good All right, so next up, we're gonna add some more texture. So I'll create a new layer, and we'll take a look at some of these stencils here. Um, so we're gonna use the spray tool and just kind of go around and uh, spray some of this texture on here. And you know, I don't really like how that looks. Um, so I, I guess my go-to for rocks is using uh, the stencil instead. Um, and this this pattern here looks really good, especially if you have the um, the randomized rotation. Uh, checkbox checked so every time you stamp it it'll you know spin and it'll get this really nice uh, organic looking rack texture here um, so I just go go over the whole surface and add some some texture and um, as I'm going I'll, I'll I'll build it up and then I'll hit control to push it down as I'm still imprinting it all right so now we're gonna look at the material because you know it looked a little too shiny it didn't really quite look like rack 
Um, so I like to get a good, good material picked out um, before we start, you know, going any further here. So I think this one looks pretty good. And also I'm going to pick the lighting. So I'm looking for like a, a desert kind of lighting, like it's high noon. There we go. Yeah, this works. Yeah, I like this one. You know, sun's shining directly on it. You know, it looks like, like daylight. Um, all right. So now the next thing is to create our UVs. All right, so we could use Mudbox to auto-generate our UV layer, but I usually don't get the best results. Um, the UV plane isn't really utilized as optimally as I would like. So to do this in a better way, we're going to do this in Blender. Um, so first, I'm going to select my lowest level mesh here and export it. Uh, go to File, Export. And then I will save this as Rock 1 UV and click Save. And now we're going to open up Blender. All right, I'm using Blender 2.8. Uh, and once Blender opens, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that starts in the default scene because uh, we don't need that. Um, and then I'm going to go to File, Import, OBJ, and we're going to pick our UV object, and here it is. And don't worry about if it looks a little blocky, because um, we don't really care how it looks in Blender. Um, it just doesn't have smooth shading. Um, so we're just going to go in here and go to Edit Mode and start selecting some edges. And I'm just going to go around the side here and the bottom. Um, and then I'll start and I'll, I'll highlight these and mark them as a seam. Um, so then we unfold our UVs. We'll have some nice, some nice islands that we can move around and, uh, and get laid out here. So let's go ahead and mark those as seams and I'll unwrap the UVs. And now I will try to have them take up the U as much UV space as possible. Um, and I always like to scale them consistently so that we don't get some weird um, stretching going on when we start painting this. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna export it and now we are back in Blender. We're gonna go to import UV. We're gonna select our OBJ that we exported from Blender. Um, and now we can go to our UV view and there we go. There's our UVs that we exported. Um, yeah. All right, I think that's where we're gonna leave it for part one. Stay tuned for part two, where we're going to texture the rocks and import it into Unity so that you can start using it in your games. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below. I love to hear your thoughts um, and interact with you that way. Um, and always, thanks for watching. See ya.